Over the years, India's economic growth has sparked various debates. However, one critical factor affecting the country's growth is the mounting population in cities, as well as the corresponding growing deficit in urban infrastructure and service delivery. The India at 100 series aims to address these challenges through the development of robust city systems. Presented by DCM Shriram Foundation with knowledge partner, the Indian School of Development Management, the show will explore the real issues as well as the solutions in detail. So let's go have a look. As Indian cities grow towards a projected 800 million residents by 2050, it's crucial to focus on their sustainable development. While significant investments have been made in infrastructure like metro, rail, sanitation, maintaining progress requires strong political commitment and input from citizens directly affected by these urban issues. Our current city planning laws are outdated and often there are not proper master plans or rules for infrastructure design for roads, markets, parks, etc. Cities struggle with limited funds for essential services, lack transparency in spending and don't have enough skilled staff for effective management. Let's understand from the experts on why there is an urgent need to actively tackle this issue. Hello everyone, I'm Ravi Sridharan, co-founder of the Indian School of Development Management. Today on this episode of India at 100, we have another important topic at hand, a rapidly evolving and complex space, and that's strengthening city systems. Joining us today is Srikant Vishwanathan. Srikant is the CEO of Janagraha Center for Citizenship and Democracy. Srikant is a visionary leader who has made significant strides in strengthening city systems across India. Srikant, we all know that the number of people moving towards cities is increasing every year. Could you help the audience understand why is the work that you're doing so important for the country? Ravi, India cities already house 400 million citizens and we are expected to grow to 800 million citizens by 2050. That's the size of a population of an entire continent. And there are three interrelated but distinct reasons why cities need to work for India. No country in the history of humankind has alleviated poverty and delivered good quality of life to its citizens without urbanizing well. India needs to urbanize well to deliver economic growth and jobs for its citizens. That's reason number one. Secondly, we already have a huge deficit in infrastructure and services, which all of us as urban citizens experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Housing, water supply, sanitation, traffic jams, air quality, and so on. And imagine our population doubling in the next 15, 20 years. So we need to urgently address the quality of infrastructure and services in our cities. That's the second important reason. And thirdly, as a, as a democracy, the quality of India's democracy will depend on the quality of democracy in our own cities. So these are the three reasons why I think India needs to urbanize well and soon. Could you give an idea of what are these different fronts on which the problem needs to be solved? Our work has led us to believe, Ravi, that there are four distinct but interrelated systems which need to be set right for our cities to deliver good quality infrastructure and services to all of us. Uh, and they are urban planning and design, which deals with the spatial aspects of cities. Second is on capacities and resources, which deals with municipal finance, municipal staffing and performance management, digitalization, everything to do with administrative capacities. Third is with respect to political leadership of the city. How do we empower our mayors and councils? How do we strengthen local self-governments in our cities? And lastly, transparency, accountability and citizen participation. So, Unless we strengthen these four city systems, we will not be able to achieve irreversible transformation and quality of life in our cities. So when you work on the city uh, system space, what are other social issues that are, that are on your mind when you're working on strengthening city systems? Ravi, one of the principal challenges of city systems in India is India's reluctance to recognize the city and its people as a unit of governance or as a unit of economy. We consider the city as an aggregation of different services and infrastructure. The city and its people are the point of convergence. So when we want to achieve human development in the city, we have to think of it in terms of how you would achieve human development in the country or in the province. We cannot solve for urban health without solving for urban planning. 
You cannot solve for urban planning without solving for municipal finance. You can't solve for air quality without solving for public transport. They are all interlinked issues. That's at the heart of city systems. And therefore, I would call out three or four big interdisciplinary systems uh, uh, which we need to bear in mind while thinking about human development in cities. One is primary healthcare systems. Second is environment systems comprising clean air, clean water, clean soil, agriculture and food supply chains, etc. Third is equity. How is India going to solve for ensuring that women, children, adolescent girls and other excluded minorities find their space in our cities, find their voice in our cities. And, and lastly, I would talk about jobs and livelihoods. So when we think about all of these, in the spatial entity called the city and the citizens, that's when we are able to visualize the entire city systems proposition. As you know, this is a series on India at 100. Would you able to give us your vision for cities uh, when India turns 100 in 2047? My vision unmistakably would be for robust city systems comprising three aspects in particular. One is participatory governance, where hundreds of millions of citizens participate actively in their own neighborhood civic affairs. Second is that our local self-governments are truly empowered, where our mayors and our elected councillors uh, are able to look at multidisciplinary issues without interference from higher forms of government. And lastly, I would say the state has capacity to respond to emerging needs of our citizens. So robust state capacity. So I would say participatory governance, empowered local self-governments and robust state capacities all constituting robust city systems in our cities. Thank you, Srikant, for joining us today. It was a wonderful conversation. Thank you, Ravi. The following video takes us directly to the heart of action, showcasing the remarkable work that's making a difference. Janagrah addresses the challenges of achieving sustainable development in Indian cities through effective spatial planning and design optimizing resource utilization and catalyzing collaboration between elected representatives, bureaucrats and citizens to enhance transparency, accountability and the quality of infrastructure and services. Moreover, they create a link between the needs of the citizens and on-ground action by facilitating participatory platforms such as the ward committees and area sabhas, thus creating robust city systems. Janagrah is working with the Union Government, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs on strengthening the financial stability and accountability of India's cities through web portals like cityfinance.in where financial information for over 3,000 cities are made publicly available. Initiatives like the annual survey of India's city systems are directed to study all facets of the city systems and to nurture deep insights into improving governance and service delivery. I consider this as a very, very important uh, phase for a ward samiti in Mangalore because so far it was only uh, the elected representatives elected representatives were uh, doing this work and now the citizens are coming into it so I think it's a very very critical because the role of citizens in the urban development is very very important These action plans supported by data are reshaping the cityscape painting a brighter picture for India's future. They bring more people into the fold, making cities sustainable and engaging places to live and grow. While working on complex problems like strengthening city systems, we must take what's called a systems thinking approach. If we do not take a systems thinking approach and address the symptoms that are visible to you, like Srikanth called it the tip of the iceberg, we will not address the underlying systems which are the cause of what's being seen above the line.